Shalom, shalom, good morning, good morning, South Africa. Hallelujah, praise God for this new morning, a day that God has made, given unto us, a day that we can shine in the darkness of this world, a day that the authority we have in Christ Jesus, that we can speak forth the word, be healed in Jesus Christ's mighty name, and see the hand of God moving, you know, to speak to your condition, to speak to your storm, and have a testimony about the power of God. Ina goeiemorgen, Pastor Tolly, goeiemorgen, good morning, good morning. This morning I just jump in with excitement. And uh, like I've said, uh, I mean, God has given us this day. The question is, what will we do with the time God has given us? And uh, Pastor Tolly, whenever I hear Pastor Marius, he says, yes, you know, to go with the, to the mall or someplace with you takes time. Because you allow the spirit, you know, to, to move. And, and, uh, and if you have a word for someone, you will just pray for them and speak to them. And this is what I just feel, you know. This is the time to shine, you know. People can talk about the darkness, where the darkness is an opportunity for you to speak about God, to speak about Christ Jesus, who died for us in our place, so that His glory can shine through us in the darkness that we face. And I'm just excited. I'm telling you, doesn't matter what people say, what, what tomorrow will hold. The reality is, I have Jesus Christ within me. The Holy Spirit lives within me. I have within me the resurrection power of Jesus Christ. And, and I want to tell you this morning... Um, you have that power being born again. You know, you, you, should, you should discern, you know, what is going on. Not just live and, and uh, carry on. Hallelujah. So, yes, good morning, good morning. I've already said good morning to Ina and Pastor Tolly. I cannot really see who's on all the other people. But good morning. If you're from Indonesia, Salamat Siang. Uh, praise God for this morning. Praise God for the opportunity to share the word of God with you this morning. Amen. Let's pray and we start this morning the word of God. Father, I honor you. I worship you. I exalt you, Lord. I just want to declare, Lord, that we have the power of God. We have no excuse to but shine in darkness, to move in the power, your resurrection power. To move and to do great exploits for the kingdom of God. Lord, we can look with our eyes and we can, can, can see the size of the storm, the size of the situation and we can speak about it. Or we can see and know who we are in Christ Jesus and speak about life, speak about why Jesus came and and change and allow the Holy Spirit to change us and to bring glory into whatever situation, whatever situation we, we find ourselves. Father, I honor you. I thank you that the word of God this morning is being blessed by the Spirit, being saturated by the Spirit of God, touching the hearts and the minds of people, bringing glory to the kingdom of God, glory to God himself. And I just exalt you, Father, I pray that you touch right now whatever people experience within their spirit, whatever they are going through. Lord, I want to say that Jesus came to bring life and life in abundance. And therefore, through him, we have the victory. We can overcome. We will overcome by his blood and by our testimony proclaiming who God is and what He has done. Father, I honor you right now. May your glory come upon everyone, Lord. Just break down every prison, Lord. Break every shackle, Lord. But may they experience a shaking in Jesus Christ's mighty name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Pastor Galilee, good morning, good morning, good morning. Uh, everyone, good morning. May God bless you. So this morning I'm speaking about um, so easily I follow my way. Pastor Marius, Doc Marius and Doc Aniki, good morning, good morning. Praise God. 
like I've said, I cannot really see all who's on. Uh, but anyhow, so easy I follow my way. And you know what I was thinking about this? The moment we experience something, or let's say we wait for God, we've prayed about something, we, we await for God to bring a revelation, we prayed for a breakthrough, we prayed for the blessing of God, maybe for ministry, whatever we bring before the throne of God, there's always a time of delay. There's always, even Lazarus, when Jesus got the message, listen, your friend is sick. He still was delayed to come in such a way that when, you know, when he arrived, Lazarus already died. Lazarus being in the grave already four days. But Jesus did not, in the time of delay, follow his own way. He was always tuned in to the voice of the Father, tuned in what the Father wanted him to do. And I want to, uh, the first thing I want to say, when delay happened, when we need to wait upon God, wait for Him to move, wait for Him to bring things in line, wait for Him to fulfill the word and the things being declared over your life, we many times struggle in the time of waiting, and then we follow our own way. And uh, in Luke chapter 8 verse 15, it says, The seed that fell into good fertile soil represent those lovers of truth who hear it deep within their hearts, and they respond by clinging to the word, uh, Dalon, uh, good morning. Sophia, good good morning. They respond by clinging to the word, keeping it dear as they endure all things in faith. And then this is the seed that will one day bear much fruit in their lives. And, and, and some translations speak about, you know, that the one, Lapis Guiamora, that the one waiting with patience, for the word, you know, that fell into the fertile soil that represents those who lovers are the lovers of truth. I mean, they will hear it deep within their hearts and they respond by clinging to the word. I'm going to tell you, if there was ever a time that we need to cling to the word. So what is the key in this scripture is that the fertile soil, Elmeri Guiamora, the fertile soil, you know, is that, that will, that will, Fala Guiamora, good morning. Elmeri Guiamora, good morning. The fertile soil is the one receptive for the word of God that keep it deep within your heart and waiting, waiting, clinging to that word to come into fulfillment. You know, and, and while they wait, it says keeping it dear, as they endure all things in faith. So what is one of the first keys that we need to understand? Whenever the word come to you and your heart being, being prepared, being fertile, meaning that word will be received. But you know, because you are a lover of truth, I mean, you will hear it deep within your heart. You will cling to that word knowing that it's only a time before that word will transpire and, and will come into the fullness of God. Amen. Just one moment, excuse me. In Indonesia, it's really hot. And I did not put on the aircon. <laughs> Forgive me for that. Because it's becoming more my mark, more aggy, more good morning and everyone. So let's go to Isaiah 40 verse 29. So this morning I'm speaking about so easy I follow my way. And usually it's in the time when we receive a word of God. We've prayed about something. We've declared a word of God. Now the waiting or the delayed period of time that we should take that word, bury it in our heart with expectation, knowing that God will produce, that word will produce a harvest. There will be a fruit. Now in the waiting period, 
when our time frame, our expectation is not met within our time frame, what starts to happen? We start to move away to our way and not what God has spoken. I mean, it's easy to, to understand this. Let's say God has called you as a man and woman of God. And God says, you know, soon I will bring you, let's say, into, let's say, your calling. And then you start praying and it's confirmation. But you do not know the door God will open. You do not know the way God will bring you into. And as you wait, as you wait, as you wait, as you wait, your mind starts making up ideas of what thing you need to do to bring you into the word God has spoken over your life. And this is what I, and then we easy will follow what we think and not follow the Spirit of God and waiting till God shows and open the door. Amen. In Isaiah 40 verse 29, He gives power to the faint and to him who has no might, He increases strength. He increases strength. Even you shall find Marno Huyamora and be weary, and young men shall fall exhausted. But they who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. I want to tell you this is just an encouragement. But even waiting on God, you know, when we start following our way, we so many times can make the wrong choices. We can so many times when we follow our way that we think this is God's way and find ourselves in a trouble situation. And then in that, because we did not endure and wait for God to do His thing, you know, we, we, we premature actually, you know, uh, bring ourselves in the wrong relationship with God. Now, I want to go to Exodus chapter 32 verse 1. Uh, let, let's read Exodus chapter 32 verse 1. When the people saw that Moses delayed to come down from the mountain. So we see a scenario happening. Moses went up to the mountain. God called him. He brought Joshua halfway and then he went all the way up the mountain. And as they waited, I mean at this time it was 40 days, 40 nights that Moses went up the mountain and not yet returned. And as they waited, they saw that Moses delayed to come down from the mountain. The people gathered themselves together to Aaron and said to him, it's so amazing when God is silent, when God has spoken over your life and telling you, but this is the path he will bring you into, especially a prophetic word, especially when God spoke to you through a dream or a vision and you experience the spirit of God saying, this is the next thing that God wants to do. But from that experience until the manifestation in the natural is always a time of waiting, a time of confirmation, a time for God to open the door to bring you into that position. The same with God's people. They came out of Egypt. Now they're in the wilderness and, and, and Moses went up the mountain and they saw that Moses was delayed. And what I'm saying is when we find a delay, we usually will start, start to talk to people. What do you think, my brother, should I do? What do you think, my sister, what, what, what should I do? We start to speaking in the waiting period and we start getting people's opinions and many times, they will help you to start following your way, whereas God has already spoken. And this is what happened. God called Moses up the mountain. They knew that. They all did, the only thing they had to do is wait. Wake up every morning, do whatever they find to do, and then wait because Moses said, I will return. But yet, Moses was delayed by God. 
Moses not yet returned within them time frame. And they start to gather together and they said to Aaron, now it says here up, up is another word for rise. Make us gods who shall go before us. We want something that we can see because the one that we followed, we do not longer see. The one that represent God, we can say the prophetic word that went before us. Now in the time of waiting of the word to being fulfilled, I do not see the signs of the manifestation of the word that God has spoken over my life. I've not seen the sign and the manifestation of, of, of what's being prophesied over my life. Now, I don't know, what should I do? I believe it's a word from God. But let me make something, let me do something, you know, to assist God in this. And, and one of the biggest examples in the Bible is Abraham and Sarah. When God called them and said, listen, you know, this is, my, this is what will happen. You will have a descendants like the stars in heaven, the seas and the sand. I make a covenant with you and, and uh, your offsprings will be like that. But there was one problem. Sarah was barren. But there was a second barrenness because she was already over the age of her, that she could have children. She was already, we can say, too old. So, but during her period that she could have children, she was barren. And now the word of God come and they had to wait for the fulfillment because the word was, was in a season of barrenness, a season of of a double portion of barrenness, a season of it. How can it happen when God spoke that? If I look at my situation, how can God bring me into that fullness? Let me help God. Let me follow my way. And it becomes easy when I'm starting to speak to people because Abraham and Sarah spoke to each other. Sarah said to Abraham, listen, I think we should maybe just help the word God has spoken over you. I think we should just follow our way because maybe God just meant it some other way. Because in the waiting period, sometimes, you know, it's only to reflect that what we believe is only for a limited time. Because once we get to that time, it's like it's then easy to do my thing. And many people follow their ways. And we, re, we know the story about Sarah, how she spoke to Abram and said, listen, but take my servant. And Ishmael was born. And it was never God's plan and desire. But they, but they had to live with the consequence of their way when God said, this is my way. And I want to tell you this morning, maybe... Some things in your life did not go as planned. Maybe God has spoken something. Maybe, God, you know, God did some major things in your life. But at some point, you know, you were waiting for a thing that God has spoken. And then you start to follow your way. And then you become like Sarah and Abram. Amen. So when the people saw that Moses delayed to come down from the mountain, the people gathered themselves together to Aaron and said to him, Up, rise. He says, Make us gods who shall go before us. As for this Moses, as for this word, the man who brought us up out of the land of Egypt, we do not know what has become of him. I do not know what has come of the promises of God. I do not know what has come of the word God has spoken through the man of God. I do not know what has become of my dreams God has placed in my heart. You know, let us make something. Let us make, let me put something else in that place that I can visible see and follow and knowing. And this is what Sarah and Abram did. They created Ishmael a visible uh, if I can say a substitute of what they thought the promise would look like. But it was not the promise, but yet the seed of the promise was also in Ishmael. So the same with the prophetic word. 
The seed of the word, there's some resemblance of the truth in what you do in your way, but it's not the whole truth. It's a substitute by doing something, you know, where there is some truth in it, but yet you find yourself with an Ishmael. You find yourself that the way you followed and putting something in that place was not from God. You prematurely actually tried to fulfill what God has spoken. Verse 2. So Aaron said to them, now listen, Aaron represents actually the, the high priest. And, and I mean, he was the spokesperson of Moses. So he was said, well, also I agree. I don't know. So many times we come into agreement with each other of the delay process that we, we bring suggestions to each other. And actually all is actually, you know, promoting something. Whereas actually we should have said, listen, if God has spoken, you wait till God opened the door. If God has spoken the word itself, being buried in your heart, being the proof of that it fell in fertile soil, shows forth, will bear the fruit that was spoken over your life. You see how important it is to prepare the, you know, the, 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 the soil within your heart? How important to have fertile soil? You know, if your heart is hardened, the word will easily be lost and you will easily go your way. There's so many people, I don't want to preach about Matthew chapter 13 about the, the parable of the sower. But this is so relevant because the less of the preparation in your heart, the more easy it becomes to, to do your way. To follow your way and not God's way. And like I said, the seed that fell on the side way where the heart is hardened, the birds of heaven just come and grab it. You know, you can hear a word out of the throne room of God, and tomorrow you do already your thing, not even following that. Maybe you're excited about a word, those, the word, the seed that fell into rocky places, and you have some substance of in your heart to receive that word, but not enough. And the moment it comes up with joy, and yes, God has spoken to me. God has shown me the path. Yet the moment it has to produce fruit, it cannot, because it just withers again, because the heart was not prepared. And then there's the thing that falls between the thistles and the thorns. That's the enjoyment of the world and the, the worries and, and all of the stress and anxieties of this world, which make the fruit barren. That's when, you know, the seed of the word fall and where we're supposed to hold it, hold tight in our faith, knowing that God has spoken, coming into agreement with what God has spoken. But what happens? Because of the pressures, God has said, you are healed, but you feel the pain. You feel that nothing has happened. But what happened now? Because of the condition in your mind that shows you are not healed, what happened? I follow my way, bringing healing through other, other means. Now, that's just an example. But what I want to say is the following. So when we have the pleasures or the oppression of the world, whenever that seed, the, the word of God being spoken should come into fulfillment, being but delayed. It will only show if your heart is being fertile. Because fertility in your heart, meaning the soil is being prepared, you will grasp the word, you will wait upon God, knowing that at due time, God's time, that word will come into fulfillment. You know you will not follow your way. Because why? You're completely dependable upon God. And then verse 32. So Aaron said to them, Take off the rings of gold that are in the ears of your wives, your sons, and your daughters, and bring them to me. He says, what do you have? What do you have? Let's see what we can place in the, in the, in the same place as Moses. In the same place as the word being spoken, the prophetic word, God's direction. What is there visible that I can say I can use to bring me to the word of God? Maybe I've got money and money 
is an easy way to, to, to create the things that God maybe has spoken, but yet God's way is a different way. And I said, what do you have? And they bring all the gold and they took it off and they brought them to Aaron. Now listen what happened. And he received the gold from the hand and fashioned it with a graving tool and made a golden calf. And they said, these are your gods, O Israel, who brought you up out of the land of Egypt. Now listen what this verse says. It says they fashioned it with graving tool and made a golden cow. Say so they, they knew exactly, Pastor Bertha Guiamora, they knew exactly what they thought they need to fulfill the emptiness in a time of waiting. Pastor Saki Guiamora, I understand the Lord sharing my friend. So I want to say, so they fashioned it, so they, that's many times us, when God has spoken and we're supposed to wait upon God to bring fulfillment, we start following our way, we start fashioning things in line what we think God has spoken to bring us into that greatness, but still it's our way, because it's not yet being fulfilled. So they make the stool and then he presents, well, this is your God. Now, this is what we, this is the path I came up to come into the calling that God has called me. Listen, what is the difference? I came up with the plan. I fashioned it after the word of God to become the thing that God has spoken, but it's not the full truth. It's like Sarah and Abram. We've come up with Ishmael. Praise God we have the seed of Abram in that what we fashioned Ishmael. And what did God say? This is not. This is not the promise. Even the seed is there. Even the resemblance is there. Even it comes through your seed. Abram, the one I made the covenant with. This was never my plan. Even it resembles this. This is not the promise. Because Isaac coming through Sarah, the unity between the, the Abram and Sarah, the unity of that out of her, because the promise was also through her, it will happen. You see, that's the thing we need to understand. In a time of delay, we will fashion things when God has spoken. And even it resembles. It's like this, God has called you, Listen, I want to bring you to the city or to a city. And then we wait, wait, nothing happened. What happened? We start to experience a city, a place that we think or thought, this is what God wants. This is where God wants me to go. And then we start speaking and we start praying. But God has not yet revealed the place. But yet we start to fashion according to our desires what we think. This is the place. And then tomorrow we start seeking for that open door. And if the door opens, we say, thank you, Lord. It resembles the change, but it's not the truth. And you find yourself in the wrong city, in the right season. And the sad part is it was never God's plan. And you have to live with the way you have taken that you thought this is God's way. You have to live with the consequence for a season. Sarah and Abram had to live with the consequence of, of Ishmael. When, when, the, when the promise Isaac grew up. And they were challenged because, you know, the, our way many times will challenge after we've made the choices what we follow. The truth of the word that God's plan for your, for your life or for that situation or whatever is. When Aaron saw this, he built an altar before it. And Aaron made a proclamation and said, Tomorrow shall be a feast to the Lord. And they rose up. I want to go to verse 7. And the Lord said to Moses, Go down for your people from whom you brought up, uh, up out of the land of Egypt have corrupt themselves. Now I understand this. In a time of delay, corruption is so easy and can so easily happen. I'm not talking about fraud. I'm talking about corruptive mindset. We are so open many times eager 
to, to bring into fulfillment the promise of God being spoken over your life, that we so open in the waiting time when God delays and God is behind the scenes busy preparing the things that everything worked together for those he loved, what happens in the time of waiting, you know, we start losing vision because the heart, you know, the, the preparation of the heart was not fertile soil. It was not a heart that totally completely received the word and waited because if the heart was prepared, it will wait knowing it will produce a fruit. But if the seed coming, and the heart was not prepared, in the waiting period it only shows where the seed actually fell, because that will determine that you easy will follow your way, because you do not see the manifestation of what God has spoken over your life. And then what happens? You start to corrupt ourselves. We started to convince ourselves. We started to say, but... I believe this is God. We start seeing things that we think is applicable to what God wants to do right now in your life. And Sarah and Abram is that huge example, even what we read here in, Je in Exodus chapter 32. An example how easily we can become corrupt in our minds when we find ourselves in a process of being delayed. The enemy will sow seeds of doubt and corruption and it will hasten you to follow your way, and it will lead you astray by thinking, believing, this is God's plan for my life. Whereas Ishmael was never God's plan, yet the seed of the promise was in Ishmael, but it was not God's plan. Yes, the choices, in some sense, maybe it's a mirror image of what God has spoken. But you see, whatever Jesus come to do is the he came to bring life. Whatever God has spoken, if it's truly the word of God, the, the truth, the completeness of the truth, it will always produce life. Not worry, not anxiety, not stress. But when we start to easily follow our way, when our becoming corrupt and we start speaking about, you know, what we think we've heard, because the seed that fell did not yet produce. You understand? So when Moses turned and went down from the mountain with the two tablets and the testimonies, and we know the story, and when, verse 17, when Joshua heard the noise of the people because he went halfway with Moses, that's another preaching. What did Joshua, I mean, Joshua was never part of that party. He was halfway. He was also 40 days. We only heard about Moses in the presence of God. What did Joshua eat? Maybe he ate the manna. Waiting for, I mean, he was alone. He was, the servant went to Moses, but he could have waited 40 days. But the people could not wait. That's another thing. Was it because Joshua knew he was not being influenced by other factors that when he came down, there was no time that he thought, oh, well, Moses is not coming. He said, basically, you know, this is my servant. I, I'm the servant of Moses. I will wait. I will wait. Doesn't matter if I wait for all my life. But the people waited was easily being corrupted. And so easily when we start speaking to people, whereas we should be quiet in our spirit, waiting upon God, waiting knowing that the word is true, that God will fulfill the promise He has spoken over your life. Amen. And then I want to go just to this one scripture, then I want to conclude. When Moses actually spoke to uh there's one thing i want to do and as soon as he came verse 19 near the camp and saw the calf and dancing moses anger burned hot and he threw the tablets out of his hand and broke them at the foot of the mountain he took the calf and what they have made and burned it with fire and ground in powder etc and moses said to aaron what did this people do to you that you have brought such a great sin upon them and Aaron said, let not anger of my Lord burn hot. You know the people, they are set on evil. He's not even taking responsibility. You many times we do not take responsibility, especially husband and wife. The husband many times schemes, have plans. But God has given your wife a spiritual, you know, sensitivity through your wife to guide you. 
And many times, husband, we just think that if we make the calculations, this is from God, this business will work because I've seen the figures. But you know what? Your wife only need to hear from God, only need to feel because of her sensitivity. And then when she you speak to her and said, my wife, I want to do this. I've got this new scheme. And she said, no, I don't think it's from God. I don't feel. If you continue, you will not success. Why? Because God said, brought husband and wife as one. And in that oneness, there need to be confirmation. And what happened? Then many of the schemes, it's the same like this. We scheme things that's from God. We plan that. But we do not allow the Spirit of God to bring clarity in our plan. So Aaron even did not take responsibility. I want to... I want to get to this place. Uh, let me just. Yeah, verse 24. So I said to them, let any who have gold take it. So they gave it to me and I threw it into the fire and out came this calf. Listen to what Aaron said. He said to Moses, you know what? We took all the gold. We just put it in the fire. And out of that, this God, the calf, came. It's not the truth. The Bible says they, 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 they. Furnished it. I want to get to that scripture. Uh, he says they fashioned it with a graving tool and made a golden calf. Now there's a huge difference. He told actually a lie to Moses. Telling you know we just throw the gold and out of this come this, this golden calf. It's like a miracle. You know Moses. I could not believe that. But not telling. Listen we fashioned this. According to our desire, we made this what we think is the truth on what we need. Because we fell short of waiting on God, following God, and we followed our ways. Because it was much more easy to present something in the place of what God has said. And, and, and I wanted to grasp it. And he said, you know what, I don't know. Out of the fire, this thing comes. My message this morning is so easy. We can follow our ways. My way. When God has spoken. When the seed truly fall in the good soil. It says here that the seed that fell into the good fertile soil. That's in the a, in a, in a Passion Translation. Represent those lovers of truth. It means that we walk in the truth. What is the truth? God has spoken. I believe that and I await on God to fulfill that. He says, who hear it deep within their hearts. They respond by clinging to the word. Keeping it a dear, a dear as they endure all things in their faith. So whatever the devil wants to tell you, listen, this word will not happen. Your healing will not happen. This will not happen. You've prayed about it. God has spoken. You know, God, it's empty. Maybe you heard wrong. All of that, your faith will endure all things in your faith. This is the seed that will one day bear much fruit in your life. It actually could have said that the good heart, the heart being prepared, receiving the promise of God, will make you to follow God's way. Because that is because you know by your faith what God has said, it is done. Yes and amen. But if the seed is fall, you know, falling in the heart that's not being prepared, many people will follow their ways, bringing what they think God's plan is for their life by decisions and start moving away. And then one, once they find themselves in a place what they've created was not from God. You know, like I've said, there's a consequence. But in everything, everything God will bring you back to, to that purpose. That's the good news. That's why Jesus died on the cross. And that's the thing I want to say. Maybe you find yourself on a way. Maybe you've created an Ishmael. And you say, God, but when? God's word. There's no expiry date on that. Amen. Maybe you just need to say, God, forgive me. We've created Ishmael. There's part of the truth. And I find myself in the wrong position, wrong place. Lord, bring me back. Repent of that. So that God can restore you. Bring you into that truth. But what's the big thing? 
prepare your heart. So once you receive the truth of God, that you know your heart will not lead you astray. I mean, Jeremiah 17 speaks about the heart is more deceitful than anything. I think it's verse 10, 11. The heart is more deceitful. And you know, God's people in Exodus was easily, easily their minds. You know, uh, the, the, the Bible said they were, they were corrupt. They corrupt themselves by thinking. And that lead them away doing their thing. I would like to pray for you this morning. Father, as we, at the end of this year, maybe we fashion things after our own ways so easily in this year. Maybe we did not pursue what you've spoken in December last year. This is my plan and purpose for this year. Maybe we moved away. Maybe we've created Ishmael's on the way. Waiting, waiting, looking at the barrenness, looking at the natural. And God, we followed our way. And then we find ourselves in a place being separated from God. Find ourselves in a place, Lord, where we should have not been. And I pray today, God, may you touch everyone right now. May you bring us back to the truth of the spoken word that you've spoken to your children in the preparation for 2023. Lord, I pray for everyone. May they arise, Lord. May they arise out of this depression, out of this situation. Ishmael may be being born, but yet the promise is still there. And I want to call forth the promises of God over everyone, Lord. To come into fulfillment, if not yet, in 2023. I pray God restores. Let the fire of God purify us, bring us back like silver, Lord. And take away all of the things that we so easily being corrupted by our own thoughts. And corrupted by people speaking into our lives that was not or had the authority or was not pure of heart. Or understandable, knowing God's word being spoken over our lives. Maybe we've allowed the golden calf in our lives and situations while waiting. And just think, God, but nothing is happening in my life. I've been waiting, waiting, waiting. I need a substance to follow. I need something. Maybe we've placed that above you. And I just pray, God, bring us back. Bring us back to that place of holiness. Bring us back to that place of righteousness. Bring us, bring us back in that place where we, our hearts is being prepared to receive the word of God, the truth. And then they bear much fruit. I pray for everyone, Lord. Touch them right now. Bless them. Be glorified in Jesus Christ's mighty name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Salamat young Jonathan. Father, I pray for Jonathan. I pray, Lord, that the Spirit of God just hovers above him. Jonathan, I speak healing to your body, your mind, spirit, soul. I speak healing. I speak right now, Lord, that everything will come in line with the Word. Father, I want to say be healed. Jonathan, be healed. Hear the Word of God. Be healed in Jesus Christ's mighty name. Through His stripes, you have healing. And therefore, Lord, I pray the word. I, I, I speak it over Him. And in line with today's word, Lord, let them experience the healing. A complete restoration in Jesus Christ's name. May He experience and glorify you, Lord. I thank you, Lord. I also pray, Father, for the ones that find themselves right now in a place of depression. Right now in a place of, Lord... Because of the lacking that they feel, God, where are you? I've prayed, I've tried, but I fell short. And my mind is being corrupt by my conditions. Lord, I pray, bring them out of that darkness. Put on the light, Lord. Let them see the glory of God. I break every corruption. I break every lie of the devil over them. Father, I pray, open their eyes to see the Son of God, to see the glory. And to be exalted, Lord, that you will be exalted. Father, right now, 
depression just fall off in Jesus name we break the lie and the corruption of the devil father touch their minds right now touch their bodies their spirit their soul bring life right now in Jesus Christ mighty name be glorified be glorified amen amen hallelujah God bless you, Fuller. May you have an amazing day. So nice to hear from you, Fuller. Every one of you, thank you for praying. May you have an amazing day. And listen, become quiet in your spirit. Speak to God for 2023. Don't go into 2023. Just in Afrikaans, we say, Mogetroffe. Just, no. God wants to speak to you. You want to have a word over your life. And that word carries an authority when the devil and the lies come when corruption come you say it is written it is written and you will experience the favor and the blessings of god jesus loves you share this with someone someone needs to know maybe they've created an ishmael but god says i can still bring order to your life life i can still produce isaac even when you produce something else but I believe 2023 is coming into the greatness of God. His plan for your life. His plan for your life. God bless you. Amen.